Don't worry, I won't take up too much of your time. But today we are going to be talking about some of the careers that we have at the Nevada Department of Wildlife. Raise your hand if you just went to Carl's talk. The guy with the dog. Yeah, uh, so Carl is one of my amazing coworkers that I get to work with really regularly. But my job is a little bit different from his. So my name is Jess Wolf, and I am the Urban Wildlife Coordinator slash Wildlife Educator Coordinator for the Department of Wildlife. So that means instead of going out into the field every day and working with bears, I get to come to events like this and talk to people about all the amazing wildlife resources we have here. So today we're gonna go over what Endow is, what an Endow employee looks like, all the different jobs that we have at the department Department of Wildlife, and ways that you can get involved if you want to have a job outdoors. Raise your hand if you like being outside. Yeah, awesome, me too. Doesn't it sound like so much fun to get paid to just hang out outside and hang out with animals? It's a lot of what a lot of our biologists get to do. So at the Department of Wildlife, Ryan has already kind of talked about this a little bit, but our mission is to protect, conserve, manage, and restore wildlife and their habitat for the aesthetic, scientific, educational, recreational, and economic benefits for all of us. So all of us are citizens of Nevada, so we're doing that for all of our citizens. And then we also want to promote safety um, on our waterways. So we have a law enforcement division that goes out onto Lake Mead and Lake Tahoe to make sure that everyone is following the correct laws. But basically, that's all a bunch of fancy words to say that we work to preserve our wildlife for all of you. And at the Department of Wildlife, we manage nearly 900 different species. And those can be birds, mammals, amphibians, reptiles, as well as fish. So we've got a lot of different animals that we have to manage. And that means that we have a lot of different jobs that do different things within the department. Now, I want someone to raise their hand and tell me, what do you think an Endow employee looks like? What do you think they look like? Awesome, so we maybe have our little logo on here. Yep, absolutely. What else, what do you think an Endow employee looks like? Sorry, repeat that. <laughs> we always carry a badge like this. Sometimes when we're at a conference, we certainly do. But not every single day, luckily. In the field, it might get a little hard to take some samples from a bighorn sheep if we always had to have this badge on it. But really, our employees look just like you. We have a ton of different jobs uh, at the Department of Wildlife and really a ton of diversity within our staff. So within our staff, we have seven different divisions and each of those divisions do different things. So the top one up there, you see the man with the fish? Big fish? That is Travis, he's one of our fisheries biologists. And if you are a fisheries biologist, what type of animal do you think you work with? Fish, you guys are so smart, totally. They deal with all of the fish as well as our waterways in Nevada. We also have a habitat division. There are four main components of a habitat that everyone needs in order to survive. We all need a source of food, we all need a source of water, we all need shelter, and we all need space. So our habitat division helps to ensure that our wildlife has those habitat needs covered. There's my division, our conservation education division, and we get to come out here and talk to all of you. We have our operations division, which really helps us to stay running. Uh, do you see the man holding the bird at the corner? Does anyone know what kind of bird that is? Who said eagle? You are totally correct. Do you remember when Ryan was talking about the golden eagle that can carry off a bighorn sheep lamb? Yeah, so that is actually a golden eagle. That is one of our diversity biologists, so they take care of all the animals that you can't hunt or fish in Nevada. Right next to them is Cause. He is one of our game wardens up with the mountain lion, and they work to enforce all of the laws that we have here in Nevada when it surrounds our wildlife. And you can actually meet Cause today. He is out in the front with our Operation Game Thief trailer. And then finally, we have a mule deer up there, and that represents our game division, and they are in charge of every animal that you can hunt in Nevada. So biologist Carl that you all met, he is in our game division. So 
we are going to watch a little video that my boss put together, and I'm just going to talk about some of what our biologists are doing in that video. All right? And if you have any questions, keep them in your noggin, and then we'll have uh, time for answers at the end. Does anyone know what kind of bird that is? Who said pelican? Awesome, that is an American white pelican. Did y'all know we had pelicans in Nevada? Yep, they come here every summer to breed, uh, particularly out in Pyramid Lake, but you can find them other places as well. So this right here is our game division. So again, they are in charge of all of the animals that you can hunt in the state. And this right here is a bighorn sheep, you, so that is a female bighorn sheep. And we have these very specialized teams that will go up into the mountains, capture a bighorn sheep, and then bring them down to our biologists and our vets so that we can take samples. Because what disease do you remember that we are keeping an eye out for? Pneumonia, great job. Yes, so we are taking samples from our bighorn sheep, seeing if our herds are healthy. And then occasionally we will transplant them. So this sheep, we got samples, we put some tags in her ears, we put a collar on her, and then we transported her out to Pyramid Lake. And that is where we went and released them. So the area around Pyramid Lake is traditional uh, bighorn sheep habitat, but they have been extirpated, so they weren't there anymore. So we took some from another range and brought them over to Pyramid Lake. We don't just do that just with bighorn sheep. This is one of our mule deer captures uh, because we want to know a lot about our mule deer as well. There is a disease that's going around in some other states called chronic wasting disease, and it can be really, really bad for our sheep populations. Luckily, we haven't found it in Nevada yet, but we do these captures in order to take samples, make sure that our sheep or our mule deer are healthy, and we have plenty of them around. So it's the same sort of concept. They're going to go up in the helicopter, grab them with a net, and then bring them down to us. Now, do you think it's very fun for a mule deer to get captured by a bunch of humans in a helicopter? Not so much, right? I wouldn't particularly like that. They don't either. So we put masks over them to kind of calm them down. And sometimes we'll give them some drugs in order to calm them even more, just like we do with our bears. And then we have other drugs that wake them back up. So you'll see they're keeping this mule deer down until it gets ready to go. It recovered, and it started to go off. Another threat to our mule deer, other than uh, diseases, are cars. A lot of animals are hit by cars um, when they're trying to cross the roads. Because typically we put uh, cars where animals will go across. So one of the other things that we do with our game division as well as our habitat division is create little tunnels or roadways above the road for our animals. And not just mule deer use them, bighorn sheep use them, bear use them, even small tiny squirrels and critters will also use them. So they're kind of like a little highway over or underpasses for our wildlife. Next up we have Fishery division, awesome, yes. So these biologists all work with fish or the waterways that we have here in Nevada. And they'll do a lot of different work. This right here, they are actually putting electric shock into the water and that stuns the fish and keeps them really calm and then they can scoop them up. It can be kind of hard in, to catch a lot of fish, um, especially when you're in a big lake. So that really helps them out. Then they'll bring them to a big tub and get samples of their fins so that we can do genetic testing on them. We'll figure out what kind of species they are. We will uh, measure them, all that sort of stuff, and then put them back into the water. Sometimes, just like our bighorn sheep, we will relocate them. So that big truck that you just saw was bringing some fish to another area to stock a pond or a lake. Here again, we're out on the water. How much fun would that be to be out there on a boat and that's how you get paid? I think it'd be pretty fun too, huh? And sometimes our fisheries need a little bit of help. Um, so we will actually put uh, fish that aren't necessarily uh, wild in that area into that fishery. So 
this biologist right here has a bunch of little tiny young trout or bass or something like that. They're too tiny for me to really figure it out. Uh, but he's releasing them into a waterway and our hope is that they'll grow nice and big and strong. And then when you're out there fishing, you can maybe catch one. Another way that we will capture fish when we are out there trying to get samples is by using netting. So you'll see this biologist is putting out a bunch of netting and when the fish swim by or try and swim through, they'll get kind of tangled up in that and then we can grab them out and get those samples. That big fancy uh, device right there is just used to see how large that fish is. And then they go poop back into the water. <laughs> Sometimes we do have to keep them for a little bit longer, so we do have these little holding tanks where we can keep them. What do you think those things are that's coming out of the fish? Yep, exactly, eggs. So we'll go up to places like Marlette Lake, we'll trap a bunch of fish, and then we'll actually collect their eggs um, in order to make more baby trout at one of our hatcheries. Look how pretty blue that water is. <laughs> It's very clear, right? And there's one of our awesome trout getting released back into that beautiful clear water. If I were a trout, I would definitely want to live there. And a lot of this work is so that we can go out there and recreate and fish. Uh, this is our awesome angler educator, Jan. He is out there enjoying all of the resources that we have here in Nevada. Next up, we have our diversity division. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of a lizard called a horny toad. Yeah, some of us have, awesome. We have a little image right here of a horny toad. Does it look kind of like a toad? Yes, no? Somebody yesterday, yesterday said that it looked like a dragon. They have a really cool defense mechanism when if they're feeling scared, they'll actually shoot blood out of their eyes. Pretty cool, right? So our diversity division, they deal with any kind of animal you can not hunt. So our horny toads, this right here is a golden eagle. That golden eagle's nest was actually blown down, so our biologists went out there and they rebuilt the nest so that they could put them back in there. Here's a little bat species. Bats are really important to us. They are great uh, little insectivores, getting rid of those mosquitoes that I don't love. And those are two uh, great horned owls that were actually nesting in front of a building a couple years ago. So they deal with a lot of different animals. All of our diversity biologists are a master of many different things. I usually come to them with lots of questions. Next up we have our law enforcement division. Can someone remind me what is poaching? So it's illegal hunting, right? It's when someone takes an animal when they don't have the correct permits for it. So we have a whole division that tries to ensure that that doesn't happen, and that's our law enforcement division. So that's one of our um, game, game wardens named Ben. He's out there. They'll be out in the middle of Nevada for days at a time all by themselves, making sure that people have the correct permits uh, to be taking whatever animal they are, making sure they're all recreating responsibly. Another really big job of our game wardens, particularly in areas where there's a lot of boating, is to make sure that people are boating safely. So that means that they have life jackets on board, that's making sure that they're not drinking and driving their boat, it's making sure that um, kids have life jackets on if they're young, all that good stuff. So they'll go out onto lakes like Lake Tahoe, Lake Mead, and they'll go out and talk to people on boats. So they'll stop them, sometimes they'll go on board, sometimes they'll just have the people come over, or they'll just chat with them like this game warden is right there. And sometimes they have to do rescues. So last year, a young girl was actually trapped underneath a boat out at Lake Mead, and this game warden right here jumped into the water and was able to pull her out from underneath that boat. So he was able to save her life. So they do a lot of work like that. Okay. Yeah, definitely. And this is my personal favorite division that we have because it is my division that is the conservation education division. So if you like talking to people and teaching them how to be outside and all the fun things that you can do outside, this is the division for you. 
Uh, we teach people how to hunt, how to fish, how to shoot uh, archery, um, how to live with wildlife, uh, as well as just what wildlife is out there. This little girl was at the carp derby, and at that derby you get to try and fish for as many carp as you can, and you try and get the biggest carp that you possibly can. I think uh, the little boy that you just saw won that year. This, of course, is the sheep show. So here we get to show you all the opportunities that you have in Nevada, whether it be hunting or fishing or just hanging out with wildlife. And then in my urban wildlife position, sometimes we get calls about injured animals and we get to go out there and try and help them whenever possible. Has anyone ever tied a fly before? You have? Awesome. Well, you can have an opportunity to do that today if you want. Um, some of our awesome volunteers will show you how to tie a woolly bugger. <laughs> Here's another one of our programs called Trout in the Classroom where we get to teach you the life cycle of trout and then you get to go out and release them, which is super, super fun. So those are a bunch of kiddos out in the middle of a little pond in float tubes trying to fish, just like our friend Greg here is doing. I think Greg was probably a little bit more successful than some of the others. But often in our conservation education job, we just get to hang out and play with everyone outside. Next up, we have our data and technology services. So even if you don't like hanging out with animals or being outside, we've got a job for you. Our DATS division basically makes everything run. Without them, we wouldn't have our maps, we wouldn't have our permits, we wouldn't have people boating safely. So they're super, super important to us. They take care of all of our offices and make sure I have all the tools I need in order to be successful. And then finally, last but not least, is one of our most important divisions, and that is our habitat division. Do you think our animals would be very happy if they didn't have the correct habitat? Probably not, right? So our habitat division is super, super important to our animals like our mule deer and our bighorn sheep. And they do a lot of different jobs. So this... So one of the jobs they do is to plant native plants. Um, sometimes whenever there's a fire in the area, um, a lot of the plants are destroyed. And when all those plants are destroyed, it leaves room for invasive species to come in and take over. What, uh, um, does anyone have an idea of what a plant that's an invasive species might be? Yeah, so it's not helpful, right? Perfect. Um, and it's usually not from around here. So one of the big invasive plants that we have here in Nevada is called cheatgrass. And cheatgrass, when a fire comes through, it likes to reseed really fast and it takes over all that habitat from our native plants like our sagebrush and our bitter brush. So when that happens, we'll go out there with a bunch of seeds. So you'll see this is a bunch of native seeds being loaded into an airplane. And someone really cool gets to go up and fly in that airplane and reseed that area that was taken over by the fire. Yes? I'm not sure the exact type, but yeah. They'll um, put the seeds in the very front of the plane and then it'll spit them all out at the back, which you'll get to see. So this um, was a reseeding project for the Martin fire that took place in Nevada a few years ago. It was a pretty big fire and it destroyed a lot of really prime habitat for a lot of our wildlife, including animals like sage grouse, which is a type of uh, bird that relies on sagebrush in order to survive. They need it for the food source as well as shelter. So you'll see the plane taking off and then look at that view. How cool is that? That is their view and they're getting a cycle of trout and then you get to go out and release them, which is super, super fun. So those are a bunch of kiddos out in the middle of a little pond in float tubes trying to fish, just like our friend Greg here is doing. I think Greg was probably a little bit more successful than some of the others. But often in our conservation education job, we just get to hang out and play with everyone outside. Next up we have our data and technology services. So even if you don't like hanging out with animals or being outside, we've got a job for you. 
our dance division basically makes everything run. Without them, we wouldn't have our maps, we wouldn't have our permits, we wouldn't have people loading safely. So they're super, super important to us. They take care of all of our offices and make sure I have all the tools that I need in order to be successful. And then finally, last but not least, is one of our most important divisions, and that is our habitat. Do you think our animals would be very happy if they didn't have a correct habitat? Probably not, right? So our habitat division is super, super important to our animals like our mule deer and our big corn sheep. And they do a lot of different jobs. So one of the jobs they do is to plant native plants. Um, sometimes whenever there's a fire in the area, um, a lot of the plants are destroyed. And when all those plants are destroyed, it leaves room for invasive species to come here and take over. What is, uh, does anyone have an idea of what a plant that's an invasive species might be? Yeah, so not helpful, right? Perfect. Um, and it's usually not from around here. So one of the big invasive plants that we have here in Nevada is called cheatgrass. And cheatgrass, when the fire comes through, it likes to reseed really fast, and it takes over all that habitat from our native plants, like our safe brush and our bigger brush. So when that happens, we'll go out there with a bunch of seeds. So you'll see this is a bunch of native seeds being loaded into an airplane. And someone really cool gets to go up and fly in that airplane and reseed that area that was taken over by the fire. I'm not sure the exact time, but yeah. They'll um, put the seeds in the very front of the plane and then they'll spit them all out at the back. So this um, was a reseeding project for the Martin fire that took place in Nevada a few years ago. That was a pretty big fire and it destroyed a lot of really prime habitat for a lot of our wildlife, including animals like sage grass, which is a type of uh, bird that relies on sage brush in order to survive. They need it for food source as well as shelter. So you'll see the plane taking off and then look at that view. How cool is that? That is their view and they're going to do that. Pretty cool, huh? So do you see all that stuff flying out? That's all of those native seeds that we're going to use to hopefully make sagebrush grow instead of that nasty cheatgrass. Another thing our habitat division does is uh, they work with guzzlers. So guzzlers are basically big drinking fountains that are wildlife. Um, in Las Vegas last year, they had a really, really bad drought. They had over 200 days where they did not get any precipitation. So no rain, no snow, no everything. And that made our guzzlers dry up. And water is really important to us here in Nevada. We are one of the driest states. So we decided to lend a little helping hand to our wildlife. And we brought out big tanks of water, and as well as a helicopter who came in and actually dropped that water on that guzzler so that our animals had something to drink. Now, not just the corn sheep or mule and deer use that water. Other species do as well. We've seen animals like chucker, foxes, coyotes, mountain lions all come to that same area and drink from that water source. You have to be really a really skilled pilot in order to be able to get to those canyons and make sure that those animals get that water. So if you are all interested at working for the Nevada Department of Wildlife or really any sort of uh, conservation organization, there are lots of ways that you can get involved. The first way is to volunteer. I started off as a volunteer before they gave me my job, and many of us have. You can also shadow people. If there's a job that you're like, I think that would be super rad and I totally want to do that, you can always ask us and a lot of our biologists as well as our law enforcement agents, they will totally let you come on a ride along with them and you can see what they get to do every single day. Um, another way to go about it is to get a higher education. Uh, a lot of people that I know have uh, college degrees, including myself, and that really helps you to get in with 
any sort of department that you might be looking at. And then finally, you can also check our job description. So if you're like, mm, I think I might want to do this, but I don't know how to get there, you can go online, see those job descriptions, and then you can make those decisions for how you want to become a biologist or a law enforcement agent or an educator like me. And with that, I can take a few questions. We've got a little bit of time before lunch. Can you have any questions? You're going to have to sit here with me, so. So the question was, what job would you have about mines and predators if they want to shoot? Uh, so that would be our game division. Um, so mount lines as well as big one chief and mule deer are all considered to be a game. So that would be our game division. Have I ever encountered any predators? Um, yes, absolutely. So a lot of our biologists and game wardens, they're outside every single day. They're out there in the middle of Nevada, in the mountains. So they definitely have been able to see mountain lions, bears, coyotes, bobcats in the wild. Uh, and sometimes I'll bring them back to the office, not that I can see all can the big crunchy member get hurt if they fall? Oh, when they're flying? Yeah, so whenever there's a capture, there's always a little bit of a risk. You're taking an animal from the ground up into the air and then putting it back down. So injuries can happen. Um, it just depends on every situation. It's a pretty dangerous job, so it, it can Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Thoughts? Concerns? Are you ready for lunch? 